What's up everybody, my name is Shannon and today we're going to be moving along to the 13 land mono green deck. Um, now I think it's fair to say this is the one that's giving me the most trouble as the early game for the mono green is a bit weak and a bit obvious of a play for your opponents to remove them with the land of war. Of course it's going to be getting taken out early often, um, but that's okay because we have other ways to ramp and other ways to get out of our lands. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at our deck tech or our deck breakdown and then we'll move along from there. So we have four copies of Adventurous Impulse. Now obviously we're playing a 13 land deck. Sometimes you're not going to hit the lands on time. Most of the time you'll be running off your land awards or druids and incubation druids plus your lands, which should be plenty enough to cast out um, all of your spells here. Or if you're not looking for a land, then you get to hit a creature, and besides that, you don't really have a whole lot of instants or sorceries, and if you manage to hit, you know, three instants or sorceries in a row with adventurers, at least you're getting them out from the top of your deck. So if you don't hit anything, you know, put them all into the bottom of your library, and it only costs one mana, so it's not, not that bad to reshuffle the top three cards. Um, nonetheless, we have four copies of Land Award to help us ramp, obviously like I've been saying the 13 land decks are fantastic but if we're going to be playing mono green we still want to play these bigger creatures because that's really the, where the power of mono green lies at so things like gigantosaurus um well where'd it go oh carnage tyrant galta you know biogenic ooze is really just in here because i enjoyed the card give me one second Alrighty, i'm back sorry about that um so yeah like i was saying the mono green we're going to be using the land wars to ramp up um, we do have two copies of Prey Upon, which I've been thinking about removing from the deck, but honestly, they seem to come in handy every time uh, I draw them out, so maybe not. Um, one copy of Shapers, as obviously your creatures are going to be getting targeted a lot, so this allows you to get some card draw off of that targeting. Two copies of Druid to help us ramp, two copies of Incubation to help us ramp slash adapt this creature to uh, become sort of a threat, or at least a good defender. Uh, two Crawl Harpooners. This is great for taking out flying creatures as well as say you just don't have a whole lot of strong creatures down, you got some in the graveyard, you play out crawl, you got a rabid bite in hand, the crawl's strength goes up to like a you know seven, say you have four creatures in the graveyard, whatever, then you can rabid bite the crawl for the seven. So it's kind of a cool little combination with rabid bite there. Um, only on the first turn you play it, by the way, so make sure you have four mana if you plan on doing that. Moving us along, we have four copies of Merfolk Branchwalker, um, and this is going to tie into the Wild Growth Walker where we're trying to hit our explore creatures, get some life gain, draw out some more land, um, make bigger creatures, just pretty much the general explore package. Now, we do only have two copies of Jade Light Ranger. If I had four, I'd be playing it, um, but again, you guys know, whenever I'm playing one of these decks that's like more so to prove a point, I'm not about to spend my wild cards on, I mean, even though Jade Light is fantastic card it will be getting cycled out sooner rather than later so no need to to overdo it there no need to spend my wild cards on a card that will be getting cycled so we do have two gifts of paradise to help us uh, ramp a little bit more as well as get a little bit of life gain in here in case we can't hit our wild growth walkers slash uh, explore creatures <laughs> For some reason, I just kept wanting to say Branch Walker, <coughs> Branch Walker, and not including the Jade Light. So, moving along past the Jade Light, we have two copies of Thrashing. This will help you take out enchantments like Luminous Bonds or uh, a Hieromancer's Cage or Nate Salon's Bindings or uh, Conclave Tribunal. A lot of a lot of spicy uh, enchantment cards out there right now. So then we have three Beast Whispers to help us with card draw, three Path of Discoveries to give all of our creatures discovery, or er, discovery, <laughs> to make all of our creatures <clears throat> explore whenever they come down. And then again, I've already talked about the Biogenic Ooze. I don't think it's actually that good of a card. Um, and I think playing more copies of Gigantosaurus would actually be better. But like I said, I like the Ooze, so we're going to be running it here. Um, Dragon Source again, it's just a it's just a big creature for five mana. We should be able to hit that fairly easily. Um, one copy of Vivian Reed to help us draw, dig deep for some card um, draw. Usually you're going to hit a creature or a land um, within your top four cards. You should at least. Mm. Then of course you can always minus three if you need to take out an enchantment, artifact, or creature with flying. And obviously the emblem is going to make your 
your creature is just very dominant. So we do have two copies of Carnage T here. Um, the he the Hexproof Trample just makes this an excellent card. So then one copy of Galta because obviously sometimes you're going to have things down like a bigger Wild Growth and some Jade Lights, and then your Galta is only going to cost you know four mana and paying four mana for a twelve twelve with Trample is well very very easy to do. So. Nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and hop right into our games. That's going to be our deck tech or deck breakdown. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Alrighty, here we are up against X Fubar 316 X. Uh, I mean, fairly, fairly good hand here. Looking for some explorer creatures or looking for a way to get to that path of discovery. So I'm thinking we actually play Incubation Dread before the Wild Growth Walker in hopes, again, that we can get to the path of discovery. So no to the wild growth, we'll throw down incubation this turn, probably gift to paradise next turn, and try and get out the path of discovery before the wild growth. No blocks. Our opponent's probably playing Esper Midrange. Never mind, we don't have to do the gift of paradise quite yet. We can just throw down the path of discovery and next turn play the wild growth walker. Sticking to his Orzhov colors. Let's see, let's see what he's got. Maybe it's a Mortify. Ugh, that makes me a little bit scared, right? You know what? If it is a Mortify, let's let's check it and see. And you say, well, how are you going to do that? We're not going to throw down our Wild Growth Walker, that's for sure. We'll throw down the Biogenic Ooze come our next turn. Because if it gets Mortified, you know, we got Mortified. But I think our Wild Growth Walker is a little bit better. Yeah, let's go for it. If it is a Mortify, okay, we lose the Biogenic Ooze, but we still get the Ooze Tokling <laughs> token from it. Um, <clears throat> so that's still good. Yeah, it is a Mortify. As I suspected. He's playing Hero of Precinct 1, and he had a card at instant speed. It's, it's fair to say that that's a Bornify. Uh, Thrashing Bronthodon, I feel like, could be alright, so we'll keep it. And again, now we have our Ooze to defend against Hero. And we managed to get out the, uh, the Mortify. Uh, how much mana do we actually have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we do have enough for... Uh, Carney T, but let's go ahead and get down the Wild Growth Walker and hope he doesn't have another copy of Mortify in his hand. Druid of the Cow, we don't really want or care to see. Mm, I think let's just go for the Merfolk Branch Walker and then we'll Rabbit Bite. We'll use Rabbit Bite on the. Uh, oh, well, that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom. Take out his hero. Maybe we should have done it with uh, the ooze and the gate. Okay. Well, it didn't really matter there, but we can now swing in with our ooze and get him for a little bit of damage. So we're already dominating our opponent pretty well off here. And we got to assume that he's playing an average land count, not like us, so he probably has at least two lands in hand. Maybe not, but... uh. <clears throat> Four actual cards. There's a discovery. Let's get him another token. I think we definitely go into the Carney. Well, ugh. I want to get down the Carnage Tyrant, but <clears throat> I think getting another Wild Growth Walker out first is better, and it means we can still go thrashing after the Wild Growth Walker. We don't need an Adventurous Impulse, so we can graveyard that. Stack these counters. Right, thrashing Bronthodon comes down, draws us out another land. So yeah, we'll swing in with uh, well everything. Seven nine Growth Walker certainly nothing to sneeze at. Oh, he's gonna double block on the Merfolk Branch Walker. I'm fine with that. It means we can get rid of Hero. Um, things he could have. Can't have a Kai's Wrath unless he has another source of black mana. Even if he does, we have two Carney T coming down after this. 
and enough mana on board without our creatures to, to cast it. So this could be a scoop here, honestly, if he doesn't have an answer. You could have a settle. Settle could save him. Hostage taker. Okay, he won't be able to cast down whatever it is he takes this turn. He's going to take the, the large walker. That's okay. I also don't think he has any explore creatures to really make it worth it, so... And there's a rabid bite. Well, unfortunately for you, my dear friend, I'm going to take that walker right back. And it's going to re-explore. Alright, and our opponent's going to scoop. So, 13 land, mono green. You know. <laughs> doing what the rest of the 13 lands did, and that is sweeping up a game fairly quickly. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go and hop into a game two here, and we'll see how it does. Alright, and here we are in game two up against card. Plain and simple. I like it. Um... Yeah, we'll keep this. I mean, we can Adventurous Impulse for uh, for an Explorer creature. If we can get up to Beast Whisperer, fantastic. If we can get up to Vivian Reed, fantastic. Boros, Annie's Pan, the... Ooh, this one may be hard for us. <clears throat> it goes for a Super Boros aggro. This could be very, very uh, uphill battle-y for me. So, we'll just have to hope, wait, and see. Oh man. So he's he's going for a hastily route and he's probably gonna swing in with his firebrand here. No. I mean I'll I'll accept the fact oh, okay. I was about to say I'll accept the fact if he doesn't want to. Um so kind of bad draw there. Would have been fun. And unfortunately we can't even take the Jade Lot Ranger here because we absolutely need the land, so Yeah, unfortunate to see, but maybe the Jade Lot will get cycled back up to the top some way shape form or fashion um, but like I said these these uh, decks that remove your creatures very early wow that's all he had was just a land maybe he has some like four mana drop creatures or five mana drop creatures in his hand um, so we'll go ahead with the druid don't kill me please fingers crossed he doesn't have a lightning strike well nothing came down one more land we'll be able to play the beast whisperer never mind he has a lava coil so again, this is the uh, sort of the downside to your deck, or to our deck, this deck. If you, I guess if you guys don't want to take ownership or claim. Well, let's go ahead and throw down the shapers. He's not dealing a ton of damage to our faces right now, mostly because he's been he's been using all of his removal for our creatures. So let's get his shapers out in this way. If he does go to remove our wild growth walker come next turn when we play it, um, we'll at least get a little bit of card draw out of it. So. Yeah. I would say things aren't looking the best, but they're not that bad, honestly. And he can't really give his Wojak bodyguard haste, because then he can't attack, because he can't attack alone. So he's just going to hit us for the one. It's fine by me. And a Jade Light. So we're going to be looking for a land. We definitely need a land. And he's probably got a Lightning Strike here, if I guess. No. Hmm. What kind of instant spell could he have? Maybe something that buffs his creatures. Maybe like a... Uh, what is it? A Sure Strike? Is that it? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's a little scary. But he does only have one... Wow, he can play something for one land. This is going to be a lot of damage to our face holes. Um, let me see. I think we still gotta try and block it. Maybe not. Maybe just taking the damage outright. Yeah. Okay. So we had a combat trick. Not often that people build their decks around combat tricks, but we weren't gonna hit the land anyways. Um, I think that's actually gonna be game. So 13 land mono green actually getting swept off our feet by this. I'm gonna say less than par. Boros aggro deck. Um, the only reason I say less than par is you don't typically want to see an Arrestor Zeal, uh, Wojak Bodyguard, or a Goblin Motivator in your Boros aggro, but he probably just threw this together wanting to play that. So, I mean, congrats to him. He did manage to sweep us there. 
as I said, if they deal with your your elves early, it's very <clears throat> very difficult to keep the the tempo going. But that's sort of how a mono green deck is, anyways, right? If you're playing a mono green stompy and they just keep sweeping your elves, then you kind of just have to hope that they don't play aggro too early to sweep you as well. Nonetheless, we'll hop on into a game three and see how we go. All right, and here we are up against AKA Nightcrawler. Uh, with a fair hand, honestly. Very fair hand. Felt like I had something on my lip there, but I guess not. So yeah, turn one into Land of War. Mono Red. So freaking fun to play against. Where do we go next term? Adventurous and a crawl, I'm thinking. That is, of course, if he doesn't just shock out or land a war here. Oh, Pyromancer. It's not a shock. That is shocking. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, I think we go Adventurous and actually just Rabid Bite the Vosh, you know. Or maybe we do throw down the crawl. Um, we're definitely going to go Jade Light, and then we hope for the Wild Growth Walker play. But for this turn, we're going to throw down Crawl as hopefully a, a buffer for his removal, right? We want him to remove this Crawl, so next turn we can play the Wild Growth and hopefully get the Jade Light down there after it. Okay. Man, somebody's just being annoying with their horn this morning. Fantastic. Some of the city people that watch my videos are probably like, yeah, so what, someone's blowing their horn. But you guys don't get it. I live in the middle of the country. Let me blow your goddamn horn. Just walk up, knock on their door. It's that easy. So I'll definitely trade out the, the crawl harpooner here. Watch him then shock my land of war like Okay, I was about to say if he if he does some shit like that, I'll honestly be questionable on this man's vendetta against the land of war. Alright, well unfortunately we did draw another rabbit bite out. Um Also, our removal is all damage based, so we can't really get rid of Raptor Hatchling without procking its enrage effect. So it's kind of unfortunate, <clears throat> but it is it is nice to see a mono red deck that isn't the net mono red deck. Like this guy's just trying to play small creatures and probably just trying to go face with him, right? He's thinking about which one he wants to remove here. I'm sure. Um, honestly, it's better to remove. Oh, no, I was wrong. I mean, yeah, hopefully he doesn't have a shock, hopefully he doesn't have a shock, hopefully he doesn't have, okay, that was, that was like the cue for him to shock me, skewer, okay, so it didn't matter actually there. We were gonna have that creature removed no matter what we did. <sighs> Alright, well, let's play a druid. And I mean, we could play a prey upon, but I don't think it's really, really that worth it. Fanatical Firebrand. Uh, we should have used Prey Upon when we had the chance. Oh no, he's just going to swing in with him? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Taking four damage. His Firebrand is going to kill the Land of War come next turn anyway, so let's take out the, the Pilgrim with our Land of War. So let's be real, the Land of War is gonna die. Probably sooner rather than later, there's another little replacement for her. 
Um, now we could play Land of War and play a Rabid Bite. Kill the Fanatical or play a Prey Upon. Yeah. Because if it'll stick, it means that we got a Path of Discovery come next turn. So then what do we play? We play the... I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Could do a degree, so we'll go ahead and do it like this. Druid up the cow to take out him. And we'll keep back our defenders. And our opponent's on top deck, so we kind of are as well. What do we do here? Block the two, I think. Take the one to the face. Alrighty, sweet. So that is going to be a path of discovery down, thankfully. Let's tap our land of war because we don't want to tap the druid. That actually makes no sense. Why magic taps the way it does is beyond me. Alrighty, he's just going to keep trying to go to go to the face. If we can get a branch walker, not a branch walker, uh, a wild growth walker, um, we'll be. Oh, 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 I was just about to say we'll be sitting pretty good. Sure, let's keep the Vivian because it'll allow us to dig for more creatures. Then we play the Jade Light, which is then going to explore three times. Library. 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 <laughs> so there's all of our health back. Mono Red wasn't quick enough. Yep, there's the scoop, actually. So game three is going to be picked up um, kind of annoyingly. And granted, his deck wasn't the standard Mono Red deck. If it was we definitely would have lost there. Um, but nonetheless, you guys can see the power of these 13 land decks. I think the mono green deck is for sure the weakest 13 land deck, but that's because, uh, well, the low cost creatures for mono green simply help you ramp into bigger creatures. So, um, and then of course playing bigger creatures with a low mana cost deck isn't really optimal because then you have this sort of bridge, you have this gap to bridge, um, which then you have to draw your lands or draw your early creatures sort of in the right order. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, even though, like I said, it was probably our weaker 13 land deck. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below and a comment in the comment section. Um, let me know any suggestions for this deck, future decks, past decks. You guys know the deal. Um, consider subscribing if you're new. It is free and it does help support the channel. We're trying to get to a thousand before April, so hopefully I can do the pre-release event for War of the Spark um, and show you guys some janky goodness um, from that whole set. So yeah, that's going to be it for us for right now at least. As always, I'll see you guys either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, so yeah, peace. What's up everybody? I wanted to take a quick second to thank everybody who stayed all the way through the video as well as give a special shout out to all my patron donors for helping support the channel. If you too are looking for ways to support the channel, consider hopping over to patron.com forward slash Dr. Spelkin. Try to make sure all support given to the channel is returned to those giving.